I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot, America's Creek Devil. Tom, would you like to introduce our guest today? I would. Jay, how you doing, sir? Uh, you and I had a very brief chat last night, and it sounds like you got some interesting stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> so I want to uh, thank you for joining us. And the other thing I want to say is what I what we always say. If you like the show, let us know. You guys know what to do. Click the like and subscribe. And you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. There's a link in in the description in YouTube. All right. I think I got that out. Um, so I'm going to hand the mic off to Jay. And let's start from the beginning. What's uh, What have you been seeing? Okay. I live in uh, Burlington, Iowa. In southeast Iowa, it's 55 miles uh, north on the Mississippi River of the Iowa, Illinois, Missouri border. And uh, in 2008, I moved to an apartment on South Main Street. South Main Street parallels the river about 200 feet away from the shoreline. Um, I had uh, I lived above a, a pub restaurant. And it's a brick building with a small patio in the back and a two-car garage and in the alley. And then, then uh, behind that is Mike Campbell's body shop and towing. It's about a 150-foot uh, property located, uh, located on the other side of the, the alley and adjoined by Angler Street. Um, on the other side of that is a a hillside that's half of its mowed and half of its wooded lot. And then you have Locust Street, or excuse me, Spruce Street, which is a side street. And then you have uh, my research area, which I just call the corner of Locust and Spruce. Um, it's roughly a 100 foot by 200 foot empty abandoned lot with sucker trees and uh, an old sidewalk where an old house used to be standing. Um, there's actually a deer trail on the property. So deer do frequent the, the location. Um, the first thing I noticed um, about the location is uh, I was on the back patio one night smoking a cigarette. And I was standing along the fence line overlooking the hills, the wooded area behind Mike Campbell's body shop. And I noticed eye shine next to a forked tree. And uh, I went and got my binoculars, and sure enough, it was eye shine. I could see them blink, I could see the, the heads bob. But it was a formation of, of three eye shines one small one at the top, and and two regular eye, eye shines, eyeballs, where they would regularly be. And I looked through the binoculars, and two, two of the Sasquatch had infants riding on the top of the head next to the forehead, probably so they could whisper in the ear, not carried on the shoulder, but right up on the forehead. What I noticed was located below the two eyeballs and it was being carried in the chest, upper chest area. Um, I went and investigated the empty lot after I saw the, the eye shine. And I found uh, a limb twist about 11 feet off the ground. And uh, it was right next to the deer trail and it pointed towards the river. And then, then there's a a tree or a stick structure at the end of the deer trail also pointing toward the river. And I pulled it apart and I had to use both hands 
to to pull it apart. It was it was jammed together that tight. Um, after that, I began to, I I began um, finding possible footprints. I found a, the best thing I could find was a a possible 14 inch track that was in some dirt next to the street, but it was old and it had been, had the grass cut over it. And it had rain, so it wasn't a good print. After that, I found uh, my first dig hole. And what I mean by a dig hole, it's a, a square-looking hole that's about three inches deep where you picture somebody taking their hand and grabbing a handful of dirt and tossing it aside and then using a, a stick about 12 inches long with a sharpened end to pick ants up out of the, the anthill that it dug up. Uh, I think chimpanzees do this. Um, time went by, and I, I didn't have any definite evidence that Sasquatch was on the property or even visiting anymore. So I decided to start food baiting. And food food baiting number one consisted only of a uh, a Walmart bag with two uh, square Tupperware containers full of green beans and cream corn. I twisted it up, I double bagged it, and I went on the property. I went in about 50 feet in and I placed it in, in tall grass. And I said, I brought you some food. I'm your friend. You can eat this if you want. And I, I, I set it down in, in, in the tall grass. Well, then I walked up into the brush. And I got to thinking, well, somebody could see that bag from the street. So I went and picked it up. And I moved it into the, into the edge of the brush next to the old sidewalk. And I placed it down on the ground. A few days later, I came back and checked on the food bag. It had been placed right back where I had put it on the, in the tall grass. The Walmart bags were laid out flat, unwrinkled, and the food containers were set on top of it with the lids, and the containers were completely empty of food. There was no fil- spilled food anywhere. But the only conclusion I could use, I could leave was that something opened that bag with hands. The food station number two, I put in the same location. And it consisted of 28 apples, eight larger than the rest. I numbered all the apples, one through 28. I also had uh, green beans, and uh, cream corn, uh, Tupperware containers again. Um, I also included one large gallon of of water, clear water. I I came and checked on the the bait station, and the first thing to go was the eight largest apples on the very bottom of the bucket. The containers of food were still sealed, and on top of of the uh, apples, Another day or two later, I came back and checked <clears throat> checked the, the bait station, and all the apples were gone. The uh, green beans and cream corn were consumed. The lids and the containers were placed right back in the uh, five-gallon bucket, and the gallon of water was empty, and it was placed on its side balanced on the lid on the ground. Once again, uh, you can only prove that something messed with the food station with hands. Food station number three, I put across the street next to the fourth tree where I was seeing eye shine. It consisted of, it consisted of eight, eight apples. Those apples disappeared the lid found on the ground, the container still in the fork tree. The fork, the container still in that 
for truth is gay. Food station number four was um, a different uh, array of stuff. I had a square block of wood that I cut out with a chainsaw about three inches in diameter. I sprayed it with a bunch of perfume. Um, I put two CDs and a very giant uh, no meat ham bone. There was no meat on the ham bone. I I put the uh, five gallon bucket across the street on top of a mound of dirt where I found my my first dig hole. The bucket ended up getting kicked over and landed on on the hillside, and everything was still in the bucket, but the ham bone was gone, nowhere to be found. Next thing that happened is uh, I happened to happened to be walking to work, and I crossed Mike Campbell's Buy Shop and Towing's parking lot, and I was walking across Angler Street. As I walked across Angler Street, I turned my head, my shoulders, and looked up at Spruce and Locust at the empty lot, and I saw a blur of a figure that turned and ran and disappeared in, into the trees. And I noticed they had four calico spots identifying it on his back. They were a lighter color. Um, what was the main color, um, This uh, the calico one? Did it have like a... Main color, then you said like. Um, I think it was tan or brown. Okay. It was really not a distinguishing color. I could I could tell you because it, it was just a blur. But the uh, calico spots were uh, a silverish or a white gray color. That's why I, I happened to notice. And there was four distinct spots on both sides of its back. Interesting. Okay. Well, I ended up having an eccentric lady stay with me at the South Main Street apartment for about two weeks. And she was she was odd. She was different. She wasn't very popular. And uh, she would do things to get attention. She was kind of weird. But she needed a place to stay for two weeks, so I let her stay with me. Well, one day, we decided to walk up to the store. And we walked up the hill on my usual route to the store past the corner of Spruce and Locust. We got up on Locust Street and we got to the top of the hill, which is the end of the the wooded lot and is the edge of a of a house and a yard. I stopped on the sidewalk and I stared down at the end of the wooded lot, and I just looked. I didn't say a thing to that girl. I just looked. And I wanted to see what she would do because I've, I've stood in the same location before, and you you could swear you'd see uh, shadows of figures in the wood line standing there and some crouched down. But pictures don't don't uh, clarify enough to, to tell if there's something there or not. I didn't say anything to her. She looked over where I was looking, and pretty soon she says, do you see those figures down in the wood line there? I said, what do you see? She goes, there's hairy people at the edge of the wood line just standing there. You can't see them? I said, no. Are you sure you're seeing what you're seeing? She says, yes, they're just standing there. So we went to the store. On the return trip, I said, well, we'll walk down to the edge of the wood line and see if you can see anything else, because I couldn't see anything. We walked 50 feet to the edge of the wood line, and something snapped a twig in the wood line, and then we got an immediate localization 
a voice sounded like a very loud bird in a distress call. And uh, I couldn't see him because the sun was in my eyes. I, I snapped a picture, but it ended up being just a blur. But she, um, the center girl says, I can see where... She, I can see a small one. It's hair covered, and it's, and it's on that trail over there, about fifty feet away. It's just standing there. I didn't see it, but she, but she could see it. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm reading my notes. This now, this gal. What? What was her, she was just a bystander or she was an employee or what was? She was uh, a personal friend of mine. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um, that winter on on the empty lot in fresh, oh, a dusting of snow, I found one 11-inch fresh, footprint on a chunk of asphalt all by itself with no other tracks around. That was weird. I can't explain that. But I have a picture of it and I have a, a, a tape measure next to it. Um, the next summer, I found my second dig hole. And it was in another anthill next to the deer trail across the street from where I found the other one. Then I found the third dig hole in the same location as the very first hole that I found the year before. Um, summer of 2011, I was sitting out, out on my back porch drinking coffee at 4.30 in the morning. And it was dead quiet in the neighborhood. And the silence was broke by three rock clacks. Clack, clack, clack. And, and it, it definitely got my attention. Fifteen minutes later, clack, 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 another three sets over by the Maple Hills apartment complex on a hillside where there's nothing but uh, sucker trees and an old abandoned, abandoned uh, alley. 15 seconds later, again, clack, 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 clack. a third set of rock clacks from, from uh, the empty wooded lot where I found the 11-inch the, uh, footprint. And then that was followed by a, a long cow moan by the original rock clacker. And that, after that, I was convinced that there were Sasquatch in the neighborhood, and there was at least three that night. That really woke my eyes up. Um, Jake. Yeah, Jake. Yeah, Chuck. Uh, I got a question about that area. Is has there been other sightings and encounters in that area? In the town of Burlington. Yes. In the city limits. A few years back, about eight years back, I got a, a message on Facebook that. Some guy he didn't want to be identified or interviewed swore he saw a monkey in the alley on South, on South Central Avenue. Um, in 1959, there's an old story where a bunch of teenagers were parked in the Jewish cemetery on the north end of town. And... Uh, Supposedly, a, a Sasquatch appeared out of the ravine, and the teenagers were throwing rocks at it, and it started screaming. It scared, scared most of the teenagers away when it started screaming. They went and got the police. The police showed up, and the police told everybody, as this thing's screaming still, everybody's to leave the cemetery now, and they pulled shotguns out and were ready to shoot whatever was making the screams because it wasn't leaving. Now, um, a friend of mine, a very old friend, he's got Alzheimer's now, was at a local tavern uh, playing pool at the time this happened. 
and a buddy of his showed up at the pool hall and said, you ought to go up to the old Jewish cemetery. There's a big commotion up there. He goes, what's going on? He says, there's some kind of an animal up there. And uh, they said it's a monster. And everybody's throwing rocks at it. And the police showed up and told everybody to leave. You better get up there and check it out. We, he ended up driving up there. And uh, all he saw was a, uh, two police cars and nobody else there. He shut his car off. And the police told him to leave immediately. He said he could hear something making a lot of noise in the wood line, but he couldn't tell what it was. He says, I can't leave. My car uh, heat soaks, and I'm going to have to wait for it to cool down before I can get it to start again. And I guess it was uh, it was about a half hour before he could get it to start. But the police just stood there, he said, next to their uh, patrol cars, just kind of dumbfounded at this thing that was screaming in the woods. And I was like, I didn't know what to do, but that's a true story. I've never been able to find out any of the officers' names that were at that that Jewish cemetery that day or, or anything else. But that, that's one of the stories that goes around Burlington. Okay. Um, I got to, to watching the eye shine quite a bit. Um, I noticed that if I put my hands above my head, they would hide from me. What color eyes um, did you see? Was it, what's that? What color of eye shine did you see? Or have you Yellow. seen? Yellow. It was always yellow. Okay. Let's see. Um, on April of 2012, I finally actually had a sighting on, on the research area property at Spruce and Locust. A friend and I were driving down Angler Street, um, and in between the electrical supply company and yellow cab company is a parking lot. And I looked looked up at the research area like I always do, and there was a Sasquatch standing in the open open grass in plain sight, not being concealing at all, and it was standing there. And it had its, its arms bent in front of it at the elbow and it was just standing there. It was a light black curly haired color and it had, uh, it, it reminded me of the cookie monster shape. The body shape. I told the driver, I said, hey, you gotta stop. There's a Sasquatch up, all, uh, up on Spruce and Locust. He says, you're seeing things. I gotta get going. I got ain't got time to stop and drop you off. Well, by the time I got up there, um, I took my tape measure and, and a camera and everything, hoping I'd see something. Um, the Sasquatch was standing in front of a, a small, small shed, large enough to hold a couple lawnmowers on the wooded lot. And uh, its head was, was uh, level with the top of that shed, and the top of that shed measured five feet, seven inches. So it wasn't very tall, but it, it looked like it was more big, big figured, I'd say. It wasn't stocky looking like, like I've, I've seen before. Um, in uh, the summer of Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. In, 20, 20, in the summer of 2012, I moved to uh, Locust Street Apartment Building. It's a 15 uh, apartment building complex about two, two blocks south of the South Main Street Apartment. Um, that winter was a record cold 
win for Iowa. We had win, uh, record lows of 20 below, uh, a mean, mean ice, sometimes 15 below, with wind chills 35, 35 below. And we didn't use our frost in the ground until April. It was that bad. We always had windshield warnings out, uh, advisories and stuff to protect your ears. It was a nasty winter. Um, that winter, at 4.30 in the morning, was a very loud, violent tree knock 50 feet from my, my Shoutville, uh, my Locust Tree apartment complex, about 50 feet in the adjacent property behind the garage. And I said, that's damn close. And it was really loud. So I sit there and I listen. Now, I always keep my bedroom window cracked open just a hair because I like to listen to the raccoons get in the dumpster below my window. And uh, there's a very large raccoon that gets into it and it's as large as a, as a German shepherd without the legs. It's that fat. It's got hog jowl jaws and it, it hangs around with a smaller raccoon. I, know, I, I listened, and there was a tree knock from across the river in a return tree knock. Um, the next summer, I was sitting out, out, out front of the apartment building on Locust Street at night, and I noticed uh, more eye shine on the hillside across the street. And of course, I didn't know if it was it was ambient light from something else, but of course you could see the heads bob, you could see the eyes blink through binoculars. So I so I thought, well, they're over here too, on this hillside next to an adjacent hillside that has nothing but sucker trees and and is unwalkable, inaccessible to humans. Um I went and placed four apples on the rock wall next to the to the hillside, and I said, "Here's some apples for you." And uh, a day or two later, at the bus stop, at the end of the street, fifty feet from where I put the apples, uh, I was gifted a an eagle feather stuck in the dirt where I stood at the bus stop. I thought that was kind of neat. Well, in the summer of 2015, I moved to West Burlington at Caspian Village. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I looked out my apartment window was binoculars at the edge of the parking lot in, in the wooded area in a clump of bushes was a tree break pointing toward the dumpsters. So I thought, this is pretty interesting. Um, on down the street from Caspian Village is a creek that, that runs underneath Agency Street and ends ends on uh, the side street where you enter Caspian Village. It, it goes into plumbing and, and pipes under the street and stuff. There's uh, a stick formation uh, along the creek and the creek is below street level, so you couldn't see somebody walking in that creek if they were walking in it. It's a pretty good way to hide. Um, one day I was walking uh, from Caspian Village to a local convenience store I was probably about two blocks away from Caspian Village and away from that wooded lot next to it, uh, next to a city park. And the city park consists of a of a bandstand, a few uh, playground equipment, and a small footbridge and a creek. And as I was walking past the park, 
I heard three rock slacks come from a drainage pipe underneath Agency Street. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Hey, Jay, uh, this is Tom. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Has Have you talked to anybody else in the area or the city you live in? Has, um, has anybody else reported uh, these type of sightings as well? Well, there's been uh, two sightings that uh, friends of mine or have uh, told me about south of Burlington in the country along the power plant road. Jack, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Jake, this is Forrest. Uh, what county is uh, uh, that loca your uh, city located in? Des Moines County. And what county? Des Moines. Des Moines? Yeah. So you're uh you're located across the river from Illinois then? Yes, golf course directly across the river. Mhm. Well, time went by and uh I used to use my binoculars to look at the wooded area at night. Uh, at the edge of the parking lot, and I started noticing the yellow eyes shine again. And sometimes it was next to the bushes, and sometimes it was in the bushes. And during the day, through binoculars in the bushes, I noticed what looked like monkey faces. And I, I thought to myself, I'm losing my mind. There's no monkeys in that wooded area. So, uh, one day I decided to walk over to the wooded lot and the wooded lot next to the Caspian Village parking lot, it's probably 80 feet wide by 100 feet and then it wraps around the back of Caspian Village on an old rail line spur with sucker trees and then it joins a main line that was built in 1912 and continues continues uh, south along a power line way to Burlington about three miles. And there's, a, there's an apple orchard over by the uh, bypass about six blocks away. Well, I took, I took my camera over to the wooded lot and I just took random photos of the wooded uh, tree line. And I didn't notice anything. I, uh, I, I bent over and I parted the wood, the uh, weeds in the, in the uh, wooded sections and something had been stepping into the bushes and standing there. There was a couple of places where it looked like something had laid down in the bushes. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I took my last picture and there was a, a twig snap behind me. So I took note of that and I didn't turn around and look. 30 seconds later, there was another one. And I spun around and I took a picture of, of the uh, wooded, wooded uh, bushes behind me. And I didn't see anything. I then left the wooded lot. I walked across the parking lot walked upstairs along the walkway and entered my apartment. That night at 3.30 in the morning, I was in the living room and I went to, I, I, I don't sleep a lot of nights. My medication keeps me up, so I keep weird sleep hours. So I was up at 3.30 in the morning. I went to get a, a beer out of the refrigerator. I walked from the living room and just stepped into the kitchen. All the kitchen lights were out except for the stove light above the stove. And there in the window was a small Sasquatch standing parallel to the window. I saw it and the first reaction was, that's not supposed to be there. And I, I stepped backwards and I tripped and I fell backwards onto the floor. It shook me that much. 
um, I went and went and stood up and I went in the closet and I grabbed my small digital camera and I snuck around the corner of the uh, kitchen sink and I snapped two pictures real quick with no flash. The room was com- almost completely dark, but I was hoping you could be able to see the figure in the picture. I took two pictures without a flash and uh, I went back in the bed in the living room and I went to bed. I I had enough beer. I decided I was done. And the the thing is, in the picture, you can tell there's something standing there with hair on it, and you can see a side profile of an open mouth. Um, but what what you don't understand in the picture is that there's no window screen in that window. When I moved in. Uh, both the living room and the kitchen didn't have screen windows, screens in the windows. I hadn't got the new ones yet. It had its head on the on the inside of the window shade tilted, tilted inward, and you could see it plain as day uh, in the picture where it had its head leaned in the window. And it never did look at me. It wouldn't look at me directly. It, it looked looked sideways. Again, away from me. And then the second picture I took, the security light on the end of the next building next to my apartment complex came on and it caught the eye shine of uh, the Sasquatch standing there in, in, the, in the next picture. They're not very good pictures, but you can definitely tell that there's something there. Whatever I had done, that day, taking pictures in the wooded area got their attention. And for some reason, they thought it was that important to walk across a parking lot of a, of a 200 apartment complex, walk up a flight of stairs to a second story walkway and look in my apartment window. It was, it was that important to them. They risked a lot being seen. And that, that mystifies me. I don't know why I would have done to, to where that would have been so important for them to come check me out. Well, let's see. Um, in September of 2016, I moved to a, an apartment building on uh, South Garfield Street, which is across town next to Perkins Park. Perkins Park is a two square block uh, city park with uh, two 60 foot wooden walkways, um, a tennis court, an old museum, a guest house, and uh, a few picnic tables and some playground equipment. That's all there is. And, and two, two uh, areas where there's wood, wood, wood uh, tree line. Um, I would sit in, in Perkins Park at night and Perkins Park at night there's no street lights anywhere for two blocks and it's completely dark and I would sit in between the two foot bridges on one of the two park benches that were sitting there and I would just sit there and listen And uh, one 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 night in particular, you could hear acorns fall f- from the two trees that were directly behind my park bench, and you could hear them hit the leaves and the branches on the way down to the ground. Well, pretty soon, I heard what sounded like muffled speech, some kind of a commotion in the bushes 40 feet to my right next to the sidewalk and the, and the end of the wooded uh, bridge in a rather large uh, bush. I didn't think much of it. I thought maybe it was a raccoon or something. Pretty soon, a piece of metal comes flying through the air and lands on that park bench I'm sitting on 
And when it happened, when it landed, I said, that's metal. I said it out loud. I said, that's metal. And it stood across the park bench and landed on the ground at my feet. And I turned my cell phone on, and it was a spoon with the, with the metal part you put in your mouth twisted off. It was a metal spoon. And I said out loud, thank you for the spoon. Um, I wasn't alone in the park that night, for sure. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Um, in the fall of 2017, I was walking a- approximately one block away from my apartment on a side street from South Garfield Street. Um. I was walking in the grass along the curb next to the street. There was no sidewalk. And the street kind of makes a slight turn and dips down. And uh, there's a wooded lot about two two city blocks long adjacent to the uh, player's workshop. And all it is is a hillside with sucker trees and a creek and a part of an old stone wall that somebody put there for some reason or another. Um, I was walking next to the edge of the road and five feet from me in the weeds to my right, something took two steps and it crunched the leaves it was walking on. And I immediately put my flashlight on it and it was just a black blur. And all I could see was was a black blur and it was paralyzing me as I walked. So I said, well, there's something in in the bush here. I walked on, I had the the flashlight pointed in the direction where I saw it walk. I didn't see anything. All of a sudden, Wherever it was, stopped between two behind two trees that were uh, there. Now the area where it walked is inclined and is lower grade than where I am on the city street. It's a hillside, so I know there was no wonder I couldn't see where it went. But I could definitely tell it quit walking next to the two trees. I walked another ten feet. And under a city street light pole at the inlet of the creek that runs under the side street is a, a drainage pipe that runs under the street. It's about five feet in diameter. It has no grating on the end of it where you can enter it at free will. They're sitting on um, a log that was placed across the creek in the hillside were four, uh, three Sasquatch. And uh, I was really taken. I was like, okay, I'm having an encounter. I stood there and I stopped and they were directly underneath that street light. The, the, the street pole or the light pole was right at the edge of the weeds of the wooded lot and right next to the curb and the sidewalk or the curb and the street. I could see him plain as day. I didn't know if I was going to startle him or, or not. So I, uh, I said, hello, I know who you are. And uh, they all had their back to me. They were facing away from me. There was... They didn't blink. They didn't do anything. They didn't move. They acted like I wasn't there. And I didn't get any reaction out of them. So I said, hello again. I can see you. And the one on the very end, it was dark, uh, jet black in color, almost uh, six feet tall, somewhat of a stocky build, 
a square jaw like a rock'em sock'em robot. Um, it had mange on its left arm from the elbow down to the hand. There was no hair. It turned its head slightly toward me, but didn't look, and had a very annoyed look on my face, on its face, like, "What are you doing here? You're here," something like that. I just stood there and watched. The one uh, next to it was turned to its right. It has back to me, and it was picking bugs out of the third Sasquatch that was to its right, and it was turned to the right, and it was, it was picking bugs out of its back and it was eating them. I just stood there and I watched this. And as they moved, I noticed the one pulling the bugs out of the hair of the one next to it, it was moving incredibly slow, like a sloth. A sloth would move. And the only thing I can think of is they were trying to conserve energy. I never, I, I didn't figure out what that, what that was all about, but they moved really slow. They didn't actually have any more movement other than the one taking the bugs off its back. They never turned their shoulders, they never turned their head, they never made any acknowledgement of me being there. Um, Behind the third subject that, that was getting its uh, bugs taken out of its back, I saw a black mass behind it. And I got to looking at it, and I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. It wasn't a tree. It wasn't a log. Pretty soon, I noticed there was two legs. And it was a Sasquatch, about 10 feet tall, bent completely over at the waist with its head next to its knee. And it had its hand balancing it on a big, huge chunk of asphalt it was standing on. And it was whispering to the third third Sasquatch on the end of the log. Um... It didn't turn and look at me for the longest time, and then it finally turned and looked at me as if you're still standing here. Why are you still standing here? And kind of a kind of a dumbfounded look on his face. Nothing aggressive or nothing. Its hand that it was using to balance on the asphalt, uh, its hand looked like the size of a baseball glove. And uh, if you take your hand and try to make a fist with your fingers, that's what it was doing with its fingers. I, I thought that maybe it was trying to feel the roughness of the asshole under its hand. I know there's small stuff like that. Um, Jake, Jake, can I ask yeah. you a question? Okay, yeah. I've heard you a couple of times now uh, make mention of whispering in the ears. Uh, now, what makes you uh, think that they're whispering to each other? Well, it'd be the only only reason you would put your head next to another individual's head to communicate. So you're not actually seeing any lip movement. You're just seeing them put their heads close. No, to each other. I no, I couldn't see any lip movement at all. No, I'm I'm just assuming, it, of course. Okay. Uh, another question for you: How in how close proximity to the Mississippi River are these occurrences occurring, and are they in within the city limits? All these are within the city limits. Yeah, all of them are well within the city limits. Um, the uh, spruce and locust area is about a quarter mile as the crow flies from the river 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 uh, edge. Okay, and another question for you. Um, how far are you from Davenport? In the oh, Quad gosh. City area. Quad City I couldn't, area. Yeah. I couldn't really tell you how far. Um, it's probably... Well, you, live in, uh, you live in Burlington, it's, correct? It's a three-hour drive to Iowa City, I think. So Davenport... No, I'm going to ask about uh, 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 the Quad City area, which would be... Uh, uh, you're in Burlington, correct? Right. 
So it doesn't. It doesn't take as long to get to Davenport as it does Waterloo or Iowa City. City Quad, not Quad, the Quad City area, which is should be uh, that should be north of you, Davenport, and and that area. It 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 sits in kind of a a crook there, going into uh, uh, coming in from Illinois. There's kind of a curvature there at the Mississippi River, and there's actually four cities there that sit two on the Illinois side and two on the uh, Iowa side there. Yeah, I'm I'm not real familiar with that area up there, so I wouldn't know the travel time. I know to go to Muscatine to my doctor's appointment takes about roughly an hour, and Muscatine is just south of Davenport, I believe. Yeah, I, I'm not I've not ever, ever been in Burlington. I, I've been through the Davenport area, and surprisingly enough, there have been uh, multiple sightings in that area. <laughs> They're all in the city limits, so that's what I thought was kind of peculiar. Um, oh, up, up uh, in Davenport? People, m- yes, up in Davenport, and that uh, with, Quad City within area. Within the city limits? With, uh, they're, they're all, there's four cities that lie in there. There's two of them on the uh, <clears throat> eastern side of the Mississippi, and then there's two on the western side, uh, on the Iowa side of the Mississippi, and there's kind of a strange... I forget. I think it's called Rock Island that sits out there in the middle of the Mississippi. There's an island that sits there, and yeah. actually, they've actually had multiple sightings within the the city in that city limit area um, on all four of those cities there. So I was just wondering how far that was from you. Uh, a lot of people have this misconception that Iowa was just all flat, and the eastern part of Iowa is actually very, very old geographically. And, geo- and geology terms because uh, uh, the glaciers came down through the middle of Iowa and that part is real flat. But if you drive down the highway, you look off to the east, there's this ridge that just shoots up there. And I forget now what they call it, but uh, I done, I've done a lot of horse business in Iowa with the rice, sing- the rice singers, uh, raised paint horses, and I've purchased a lot of horses from them in the past past years and uh they live up in central iowa so i i usually went through the davenport area and uh they do have uh, and they have had multiple sightings strangely enough in the um city limits there so that's why i was just wondering how far away from uh davenport and you know most you actually were. most people I, i've never been to Bullington. most people don't think iowa and bigfoot but some of the best track pictures i got were from iowa yeah Huh. Well, like I say, most people think I was just all black corn land, and it's it's not. I mean, the eastern portion of it is actually very old geologically, and uh, a lot of uh, it's rocky terrain and uh, higher hill country there. Well, back to the description of the, of the four Sasquatch I saw. Uh, <clears throat> The three Sasquatch that were sitting on the log, the two uh, two on the right were probably in the seven foot tall range. I couldn't tell because they were uh, sitting on a log. But the third, the third uh, Sasquatch on the end had four calico spots on its back, just like the one I'd seen on Locust Street. And I said, I've seen you before. Um. The one that was standing behind it, though, it, it had to have been 10 feet tall. Its its lower back was covered by the tree limbs of the of the of the uh, sucker trees that it was standing next to. It was that tall. Um. Well, I stood there and watched them for about 15 minutes. I kept hoping that somebody would walk by so I could I could point them uh, to where I was looking at and possibly get a picture on their cell phone. But, of course, nobody walked by. At the time, my cell phone was broken, and my digital camera had been stolen at the college. I had no way of taking a picture of it, and I could shoot myself to this day 
for not having a way to take a picture of what I saw. Um, at one point, I said, what are you doing? Um, because, they were, excuse me, they were just sitting there, not moving, not doing anything. They acted like I didn't exist. So I said, I finally said, well, I have to go. I hope to see you again soon. And I left the curb and across the street and was on my way. And that's, that's uh, all I've got for you. I've had uh, other, I've had seven encounters throughout my lifetime, a uh, total of seven encounters throughout my lifetime in 45 years. Um, I've had a, a nighttime sighting in 2000 at the Lamoles Creek in Lee County, Iowa, at Sandusky, Iowa. Um, I've had a few encounters in, in Sandusky itself. Um, but the only one day, daylight sighting I had was on Spruce and Locust during the day when I was standing in the, in the grass. Um, I also uh, have casted, I went on a uh, canoe trip in in 2012 when I lived on uh, Locust Street to a Mississippi River Island about a mile north of the Great River Bridge on the Illinois side. There's, there's an island. We landed the canoe and in the, in the sand in front of a barge were all kinds of footprints. Too big, big to be human. There was a log in the sand and there was large river rocks placed on it as if a juvenile had stacked them there. But the footprints themselves were all deformed. One foot, the toes were bent to the left completely from from the midfoot forward. Um, the, uh, the, the print I casted was a 13-inch print and it had a toe growing out the side of the big toe. And then I also casted a six foot, six inch, six toed print, not, not six inch, a 10 inch print that was six toed. I also stood in very, um, not well defined 23 inch footprints that were just, uh, astronomically huge and uh, the foot itself looked like it, they were worn out. There were uh, calluses and blisters and uh, I just couldn't believe how big those Sasquatch tracks were but they were there. Um, on the river island I, I found a large tree structure, a stick structure and then I found a wooden tree trunk that was standing uh, all by itself with two smaller trees leaning up against it. And if I would have touched it, the whole thing would have collapsed. It was very dangerous. But something had set that there for some reason. But uh, the Sasquatch must go to that river island and hang out. And uh, it wouldn't be very very hard to cross from the Illinois side. It's only about 100 feet away, the river island, when, when it's above uh, water. Well, Jay, this is Chuck again. Uh, I got another question for you. Yeah. Are there any missing reports of people in those areas at all? Oh, yeah. Brunson has his share of missing, missing persons. The... Uh, the latest I can tell you about is a gentleman that disappeared in 2020 on uh, odd circumstances. He, he had been taking uh, an energy supplement called basalt and putting it in his soda. And uh, I came across the story, the whole story, on Facebook just today. And... Uh, he ended up disappearing without a trace. 
and uh, he became very paranoid on, on this drug, and nobody knew what what bath salt was at the time that he took the drug. No, the doctors in Iowa City didn't even know what it was; had never heard of it. And uh, it's really some bad stuff. But evidently, he was taking bath salt and uh, ended up shooting himself and going to the hospital and ending up in Iowa City. But that's the, that's the part of the story. I don't know the rest of it. it uh, the story was to be continued. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I had a friend in 2014 when I, when I, I, I stayed in Kickhook for about 11 months. Uh, I was down there in Keokuk and I got a phone call or I got a text message from a homeless girl I knew here in Burlington. And she told me she was in the woods with no way to make a fire and she didn't have a coat and it was 17 degrees. I said, you got to get to town and, and get to the police station or something to get, to get you somewhere where you can get warm. You're going to freeze to death. And uh, she quit texting me all of a sudden, which I thought was odd. I thought maybe her phone battery just died or something. But I never, ever heard from that girl again. And neither has her sister. Let's, um, we're out of time, folks. Jay, very interesting information. Appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having me on here. I really do. Well, it's our pleasure. Um Thanks for stopping by, folks, and uh, join us next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. Until then, keep your eyes open out there.